All right, greetings today. Uh, today's uh, gospel encouragement comes uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read the whole chapter here and just uh, remind us of the glory of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ through the gospel, through the finished work of Christ. Remember, Christ is the good news. He is the gospel. Uh, and so today, if we're in Christ, uh, the glory of God is not only revealed to us, but but we've put our faith in Christ, and the glory of the glory of God is in us. The glory of God resides within us, and we are now called to reflect that glory uh, to the world that needs to see the glory of Christ. So let's spend a couple of minutes reading Second Corinthians chapter three. I'm going to read the whole chapter uh, just for our encouragement today. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter of recommendation, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has, put, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, Will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For, for if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. So you get the comparison here that Paul is making between the glory of the Old Testament law that, that is now faded away because something of more substance, substantive glory has, has overcome, it has, has passed it by, has been ushered in. That is the glory of Christ. Now listen to verse 12. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Verse 14, but their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Right now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit." So, so you see what happened when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the glory of God was set upon you. Jesus reveals the glory of God. He is the express image of the Father. He is God in the flesh. And when Jesus went away, he says, I'm going to send another comforter who will come upon you. He is, he is with you, but he will be in you. So when you and I put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God was put inside of us. And so the glory of God is within us. And now with boldness, we can go forth and reflect and shine forth the glory of God to a world that desperately needs to see it. Well, well let, me, let me read today's reading. Uh, that, that was all free. Today's reading is this, transformed by glory. This comes from the Gospel Primer. The glory of God is the most powerful agent of transformation available to mankind. It is so powerful that it transforms those who merely gaze upon it. It is so powerful that it, uh, the, the Apostle Paul, excuse me, the Apostle Paul gives personal testimony concerning this stunning fact. 
But we all, he says, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. From Paul's testimony, we learn that if we wish to become all that God wants us to be, we must behold his glory every day. Uh, but where do I find God's glory to behold? Indeed, the glory of God is revealed throughout all of creation, but the Bible indicates that outside of heaven, the glory of God in its thickest density dwells within the gospel. For it is this reason that the gospel is described in scripture as, quote, the gospel of the glory of Christ and the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. Consequently, as I habitually gaze upon the glory of the Lord revealed in the gospel, I can know that actual deposits of God's very glory are attaching themselves to my person and transforming me from one level of glory to another. This transformation is deep and abiding and unfadingly displays the glory of God to others. What a privilege we have that you and I today can reflect and shine forth the glory of Almighty God because he is alive in us. I trust that's true of you today. Let's pray together and ask for God's help as we seek to do this. Uh, this is not a human endeavor. This is a spiritual endeavor. Father, we recognize our need for you today. We recognize and thank you for the glory, for your glory that has been revealed to us in and through the person of Jesus Christ. We thank you that your glory through our faith in Christ, your glory has been set upon us and lives within us. And we have the opportunity today to shine forth your glory. So God, we make it our prayer. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, you've shown us your glory. Reflect your glory through us. God, we need your, your help for this. We can't do it in our own strength, and our own might. It is a spirit-wrought endeavor. And so we need the spirit of God, the fullness of your spirit. Your word commands us, be filled with the spirit. And so we ask today that you would fill us with your spirit and help us to live victoriously in Christ and to shine forth the glory of of Christ so that others might see it and live. Give us boldness today, Lord, to not only reflect your glory, but to speak about the glories of the gospel as we encounter others. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you today. Hope you'll be encouraged.